This week, we'll check out a time-lapse workflow using Final Cut Pro 10. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's episode of DSLR Video Skills. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and build a time-lapse sequence using Final Cut 10. Now, in my personal experience, I think there are other workflows that are a bit easier, but a lot of you said, how do I do this on a Mac? This is the software I have. And I think once you know the steps, you'll find that it's not too hard to pull this off right inside of Final Cut 10. Now, you will want to check out some of our earlier episodes. We covered things like how to shoot time lapse, how to organize the images, and then how to develop them. If you are going to shoot raw or want to color correct, I highly recommend that you do that step first using an application like Photoshop, iPhoto, Aperture, Lightroom, you name it. There's lots of workflows. Just get the images processed in advance and make sure you're happy with them. The less color correction you have to do, the better off you are when you import those images. All right, let's go ahead and jump in here and see how it works. I made a new event, and that event is on my drive. I already named it Time Lapse, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and check our preferences here, and under the editing category, I'm just going to adjust the default still image length, and that'll be fine. I'll go ahead and close that. And let's import our files. Now, I've already got these processed, in this case as a TIFF. I'm going to select all those images. I just press Command A to select them all, and I'm going to import them into the event I've already created. Now, you could choose to create optimized media if you want. That's going to go ahead and convert these, in this case, down to a JPEG, or it may do a PNG, depending upon the file format. Let's go ahead and bring that in. And it's going to process those images and add them to the event. There it's done. And you see we have a bunch of stills. Now, if you want to know how we actually made these images, be sure to check out those earlier episodes I mentioned. But this is looking pretty good. Next, I'm going to make a new project to hold this here. So let's just go back to our projects. And on my drive here, I can click the plus button and I'll call this overpass. And click OK. It's gone ahead and set that up. And I'm just going to select all my clips and drag those down into my timeline. Now when I do this, it's not going to be the right size. So we're going to need to make some changes. Notice it's asking, what do you want to do? Well, I'm going to set this to the size I want, in this case 1080p at 23.98 for the 24p frame rate, and click OK. There we go. And what we're going to do here is process this. Now, it automatically scaled the clips down, so we're getting some black bars on the side, but we can get past that. Plus, the duration here just isn't right. If you look at it, it's making each clip a lot longer than what I specified. For example, that's 10 seconds long. So with all the clips selected here, let's just press Control-D to change the duration. And I can enter a new number here. I'm going to enter 2 for 2 frames and hit Return. And you see that all those clips are going to ripple back down into a 2 frame duration. There we go. Let's press play. And you see all those frames. Now it's going to be a little choppy because it's not optimized media, but that's okay. Eventually that will get a little bit smoother. With all of those selected here, let's group that into the compound clip. There we have it. So now it behaves like a single clip. And this makes it easy to adjust things like the scale. There we go. I could also adjust its position if necessary. Click the box there, and that gives me a handle that I can grab. And I can drag that to reframe the shot in this case to see a little bit more of the street. That's looking good. Let's just go to this looks category here, and you'll see a whole bunch of presets with your clip selected. You can go ahead and audition some of those. And a simple mouse over will give you the different looks. That looks pretty good, a little bit gritty. 
and you can just apply that with a quick double click. There we go. Let's twirl that down and you see we have the amount slider. So I can dial in the intensity. It doesn't have to be at 100%. That looks pretty good. I'll uncheck the match iMovie box because I like it to be a little grittier. That looks nice. And I'm all set. I've got my time lapse generated and I've done a little bit of color processing. Again, lots of choices here that you can play with. When you're all done, you'll just go ahead and choose Share. Make sure you've got the actual project selected. And in doing so, you've got a whole bunch of outputs. I prefer to go to Vimeo, so I can just send it out that way. Or I can push this out to the Apple Media Browser, which will allow me to do multiple sizes, such as I could choose my Apple TV or my iPad. And this allows you to easily put it out. That looks good. We'll do the Apple TV, which will give us a nice HD file and I click Publish, and it's going to go ahead and render and process that file out and add it into my media browser, which makes it available on iTunes and throughout all the other iWork and iLife applications, as well as the Final Cut 10 applications on your Mac. So you see that's not taking too long. If I want to see detailed progress, I could just click Share Monitor and see exactly what's happening, but that's going to go ahead and run in the background, and it's doing a great job, and I'll have the file to show you in just a second. Okay, that takes just a couple minutes, but it's all done. Let's take a look at the finished shot. There it is. It's put into my project. There's our shot developed using Final Cut 10. Now I have a little bit of flicker from some of the lighting conditions changing, but you see the color is all stable down here. I can go ahead and post-process that or average that out a little bit, but it's still pretty cool. So there you have it, a all Final Cut 10 workflow to get those time-lapse images assembled. If you want to check out some additional tutorials, we have a bunch of them over at the Adorama Learning Center. Be sure to head on over there. There's articles as well as videos you can check out. And if you need some new gear, be sure to check out Adorama.com. My name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining me. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.